Why settle for incremental growth when you can boost your revenue, cut costs, and adopt new technology more quickly? Why navigate the complexities of AI and, and the complex tech projects or technology projects alone when you can have insights from the forefront uh, runners and the, and the innovation providers such as Glorium Technologies? What the world's uh, leading AI and technology experts are doing right now to transform healthcare and life science organizations and drive unparalleled growth right now is what we're discussing in these podcasts. This podcast is your gateway to the answers, providing a deep dive into the world of artificial intelligence and its power to amplify your revenue, to cut costs and, and, and adopt those efficiencies that are critical to deliver patient care, especially around healthcare and life sciences. So my name is Dudley Peacock, and I'm joined by our AI and technology expert, our resident expert, Dmitry Stepanov. And uh, welcome to our podcast, The Revenue Amplifier, AI in Action. Hey, Dmitry. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. You've had a busy week. You've been traveling the, traveling the country and seeing people and the conversations that you've been having have been pretty interesting. So, I mean, today let's just catch up on 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 the events of of healthcare and life sciences as we as we've been doing every week so far. And today we're digging into even broader and even slightly deeper topics, such as the business aspects as well as technical aspects of AI and so on. And I think it's quite a nice agenda we've got today. So you want to you want to just kick off and let let's let's start tackling one of um, one or two of those technical aspects uh, because I think I think in healthcare and life sciences, especially those people watching this and they from the from that industry from that sector or even patients. I think we all are patients. If you would like, we all go to the doctor sometimes. I think, and we'll have some kind of medical issue from time to time. So we are we are part of the whole stakeholder group, if if you think of the, the bigger picture side of things. So, but let's let's get into some of the technical aspects of how AI and especially the the the, the developments that that are busy happening. Let's let's tackle one or two of those. Yeah, sure. I mean, we can definitely uh, touch a couple topics in this area. So, uh, I mean, I mentioned multiple times before. Uh, there is a lot of development going on in artificial uh, intelligence, not just from the pure technical standpoint, but from the research standpoint. So, mm -hmm. and that's a very interesting consequences of, of those researches and uh, conclusions based on those researches again. So a uh, couple most interesting uh, researches that I was reading about over uh, last week uh, is actually uh, creativity creativity mm -hmm. humans versus artificial intelligence because i mean we we've been i mean we we're talking and people are talking about how artificial intelligence is creative it can generate the text for us it can generate videos um I images basically whatever you want right but we obviously would like to to know how creative it is is it a pure creativity uh, are people are done with creativity and we just need to to, uh, I guess, transfer those tasks to artificial intelligence. So if you want, we can definitely talk about this topic. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I think, I think the creative, I think there's some studies being done around creativity and, 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 and I think what's busy happening. I think we've seen it a number of times is where they're saying, okay, here's a group of humans. And then we've got a, a few AI models and, and let's put them together and ask them the same question and see what the output's going to be. Right. And trying to get to see which one has got the best ability to answer correctly, but also answer in a creative way, I think laterally and so on. So I think, um, I think that's, that's well worth uh, uh, sort of digging into today. Sure, absolutely. So uh, this study was actually trying to kind of deep down to uh, divergent thinking, uh, which is basically basically an ability to uh, generate result, answer the question, uh, which mm -hmm. doesn't have one specific uh, answer. So uh, 
for, for example, the question um, we're asking something like uh, create, uh, come up with a creative use for everyday uh, object. I, I don't know, like a, a rope or a fork, right? And or asking a question, uh, what if humans no longer need to sleep or uh, to, <laughs> to, to generate 10 nouns that are semantically distant as, as much as possible, right? And I mean, for example, like, I mean, dog and cat, they are very close, but cat and ontology is totally different uh, semantically words. And, uh, and uh, well, I mean, th they were comparing those, uh, the answers were between human control group, it's like uh, 150 people or so, and uh, GPT-4, well, I guess it's one of the most overused uh, engines, artificial intelligence, I guess, because it was the first one. Uh, and they analyzed the results. And mm. uh, well, I interestingly, uh, ChatGPT produced more creative results. Uh, it was, uh, it, it basically was answering better than humans. Right, mm -hmm. and and people would say, well, I mean, uh, GPT four, Chat GPT four, is already more creative and provides mm -hmm. better results, and so on, so on. But you actually need to look at this very, very carefully as the study that I hope they did a very good job. Uh, they actually found few new answers. Well, first of all, first of all, Chat GPT cannot just be creative it is induced by people to generate something right so it just sits uh it's basically in mm -hmm. state of st stagnation i i do not generate anything unless you ask me to generate something okay? i mean asking mm -hmm. is a uh, creativity by itself by the way so uh and creating i mean we all probably heard those uh, and saw those images uh two-headed five-legged elephant is not a very creative <laughs> result to be frank <laughs> even so it's original i guess but to <laughs> original is not always uh, creative and uh, another thing that actually was very interesting is that uh, people well because i mean they obviously did some follow-up and asking uh, mm -hmm. a question especially at the control group uh, human group um, why you did this, why you didn't do this, uh, because they were showing the similar result from the chat GPT. And one of the uh, answer that was actually on the top, that human participants may have felt that they were, I guess, constrained by their responses because it needed to be grounded in the real world and because of our, I don't know, self-constraint, self-control, uh, some other aspects of humanity mm. didn't let them to express those ideas. So they had them, but they, no, that's stupid. No, that sounds weird. No, that's kind of, people will be laughing at me or something like this. And well, obviously ChatGPT doesn't care that people laughing or it's a strange, <laughs> or it's, uh, some other stuff. It doesn't get embarrassed. It doesn't get shy. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> As I said, five-legged elephant, it looks nice to me. <laughs> what are you complaining about? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, and uh, well, as the researcher said that, well, I mean, you need to be very careful uh, looking at the results of such researches because they do not really uh, measure creativity per se. Uh, because, I mean, again, creativity is a more complex uh, piece, uh, not just uh, comparing uh, some very narrow results of very narrow questioning, uh, very narrow, I don't know, uh, generative uh, responses. Uh, but uh, one of the things, I mean, that actually was a good research because it, it did show that in some aspects, open AI or any other AI model actually outperform humans in some ways. And we shouldn't be afraid of this, I guess, the same way as we shouldn't be afraid of cars. They do outperform people, right? I mean, they run- Yeah, they definitely get faster than us. <laughs> yeah. Are we afraid of people? Are we saying, no, no, let's, let's ban all the cars because they outperform people. They will do something to us. Well, I mean, they do, right? I mean, to be fair, but again, I mean, it's, <laughs> you just need to control about this, okay?
Uh, and uh, I, I guess another research, which is actually more more healthcare and more uh, engineering, uh, that's actually a fusion between healthcare and engineering. Um, uh, New York City University, they actually uh, did conducted an experiment and they put together a group of uh, healthcare professionals and software engineers. And using basically chat gpt they they use chat gpt as a communication translator i would say between these two teams to create an application uh for for one of the uh, healthcare uh, uh, applications um i believe yeah it was uh, the a diabetes application diabetics about uh meals about controlling environment exercise and so on so on and they basically they they again they had like uh, i believe two or three groups uh in in both uh, sides one of the group uh, it was just a regular development so engineers and those healthcare professionals they were communicating in the regular way just like i mean old-fashioned way without understanding each other right i mean engineer is doing what what nice that's how it should be engineered that's the best practices this code should like this and this needs to be like this and healthcare i don't care about your software development that needs to be treating our patients but uh in another group as i said chat gpt was actually in the middle and it was controlling this communication between two two group uh essentially working as a translator and I, I, if you think about it it's the same way as a regular translator uh, that translate I don't know, uh, one language to another language, I mean, right? I mean, it's uh, sometimes different professionals, they talk different languages and you just need something in the middle to make to make communication clear and understandable. If Even if you take a translator going from one language to the other, meaning in one language uh, and trying to explain what somebody has said in another language could have a totally different meaning. Oh, yeah. Something that is pleasant in one language could actually be a swear word or something unpleasant in another language and if you do a direct translation so if you have something in the middle that does does really good or, or high quality translation the results and the output is probably going to be better than than the direct translation and even a human being translating between the two true so you, you, you like, about and as you said, engineers think in an engineering way, and 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 pharmaceutical and 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 medical people think in a different way. And then, how do you get them to talk together and, and talk the same language? They might be speaking the same language, but not necessarily in the same way. Right. I think that's what you're meaning. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. And I mean, as a result, results were actually very amazing. Uh, they were able to build this application under 40 hours comparing wow. with the 200 hours we're using our old fashioned approach so mm -hmm. i mean it, it was a small project to be fair right but i i think it's very promising and actually that's something should be considered on, on everyday activities i mean uh, to, to be frank that the sometimes especially when it's a, a very uh, i don't know highly paced day and i have a lot of activities and some email comes i just skip the first sentence second sentence and then i look at this email at a totally different angle i don't i, I miss this piece <laughs> i miss this essential part yeah. and uh sometimes sometimes i mean i, I just put it in the chat gpt just uh, summarize it tell me what what specifically this person wanted from me because sometimes just reading from this piece i don't know what he wants from me yeah, a lot of words a lot of i don't know sometimes complaints sometimes good stuff but what does he want from me and especially if you're not focused just give it to chat gpt it will interpret for you it will give you a few essential pieces here here oh now get yeah, excellent so that was about it because i mean again just like with the creativity chat gpt it it doesn't get tired it it just it just keeps working it just keep generating keep summarizing for you so that, that's the same way with a translator i'm thinking from a even from a i mean if, if i look at glorium uh, technologies as a as a company and a development company i mean you would go in to a particular organization to work on their technology to do development work and to understand what the needs and requirements are and then you would develop a particular model or something for them to test, maybe a sandbox environment or a proof of concept or something like that. 
and then you would get the feedback and then you would make the changes and so on and there might be backwards and forwards until you get something that's at least to the level to what the users might want, might want or had required in the first place. It may be that even in your development process that your, your entire client engagement might be improved over time to reduce the amount of time to collect the what we used to call discovery and where you go through a whole discovery process and understand the, the the needs and requirements and start to break down the workflows and the things that need to be fixed right. or adjusted or added to or whatever it is but but then in technology it doesn't always mean the same thing i mean if sometimes to a user a button is a button it's like if i press it it must do stuff but from a technology point of view, there's a lot of things that must happen behind. And another thing that also happens sometimes is when you add something, it breaks something else. So uh, from a technology point of view, I think it might even help from, a, from development companies and companies that have to apply uh, technology might even be useful there. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, you must tell me what you think the experience will be going forward. You, you're actually totally right. I mean, uh, this actually concept of misunderstanding, not hearing each other between. Uh, it's actually more generic. Let me put it this way. It's actually more generic. It's a basically, uh, well, I wanted to say management team and engineering team, but I guess it's uh, to make it more proper, it's between product owner team and engineering team. It's uh, mm. uh, probably, again, it's a more generic statement and more uh, generalization of the situation because it's just different uh, point of view. I mean, uh, if you are a product owner, you want to move um, quickly on something more valuable for your product to develop something to release something because you know that clients want uh, this specific feature or this specific functionality tomorrow not next month yes. and they yes. don't want to refactor the code or something like this but engineering team sits in well i mean they do have vision obviously they have roadmap uh sprint planning and everything backlog but again, they are okay, so we just need to complete the sprint. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, the management team telling us something, but don't they do it every <laughs> week, right? Just forget about this. And, and, and I think it, it is essential to have mm -hmm. a very, again, clear communication between those teams, uh, whatever teams they are, again, management, engineering, product owner, something like this. Uh, and, and if there is a misunderstanding and uh, different languages, as you say, they speak, they speak business language, they speak engineering language, it's they are different languages. Mm -hmm. and, and the piece that connects and interprets and not just linguistic right uh, translation, it's actually cultural translation, which is important mm -hmm. here. I mean, domain cultural, I mean, here, but I mean, even, even nation cultural uh, translation is important sometimes. Uh, it's very essential and it definitely should improve the results and uh, reduce waste, reduce cost mm -hmm. and make everything be much, much better. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of scope, and and as these use cases come up, you, you you the the use of AI starts becoming more realistic. Yes, I, there's one there's one thing I want to, I want to just just maybe throw a bit of a curveball in there. I, I went to an event this this week, and yes, and and one and one of the panels that were that were, were speaking, they had different people on the stage, and. And one person was very much uh, business orientated. One was actually a, a person that had built a four billion pound business uh, in the home industry, for instance. And another one was a technology person. Another one was uh, someone from um, uh, what's it, uh, the World Health Organization. Another person was from. They were from different places. Others was look. They were looking at looking after children between twelve and eighteen and trying to make sure AI doesn't interrupt their you know the safety and 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 you know give them the wrong information as as growing you know young adults for instance right and what was what was very interesting was there were some people that were let's call them uh you know more and and I, I don't want to go into that topic too much but there were there were some people who were slanted towards being more feminist if you like and then others were more not too worried about feminism but they were more worried about business impact and then they're in the audience in that same panel there were other people that were worried about mental health 
and then the conversation ended up being sort of AI has a bias and how do we get rid of bias? And, 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 and I, what my question was, and that was never answered in the panel, and maybe we could over the next few weeks try and unpack what this really means, but how do you define bias? Because in a, in a community that you could have grown up, you could have a bias towards a particular thing, thing that you eat, maybe even just a type of food. You enjoy that meal because that's what you grew up on and that's what you enjoy. So you've got a bias towards that meal where another family could have a bias towards a different meal because they grew up differently and they, and they might not agree that it tastes nice, the other person's food. Now, which one is right? And I suppose the same question comes back to your creativity. How do you define what is creativity? Because it's, it's like, okay, one is more creative than the other, but what does it really mean? And, and the same thing with bias. And, and I think I want to tackle these things because these are the things that come up a lot. And then, then, then there's the other thing that people keep saying, which is now much less and less, the, the hallucination element of it, like as in uh, you know, generative AI is giving hallucinations. But maybe it's not so much hallucination, but maybe it's more your creative. interpretation. It's well, more creative and it's being biased and maybe not doesn't carry your bias, if that makes sense. So I don't know, maybe we want to tackle that today or some other time. Well, I mean, we, we can kind of touch it. I definitely, let me put it this way, I, I definitely would like to read up a little bit more about this, but from the information that I have currently, mm -hmm. uh, hallucination, creativity, and all those words related to artificial intelligence, especially in the way how they do it now, they actually are inappropriate words, to be frank, because it's, um, uh, well, if you have a glitch in your computer, is your computer biased? Is your computer just being creative? Yeah, and, and yes, creative? yeah, and, and it just <laughs> sent million dollars from one account to another. Well, it's just creative. It just I, mean, I, I feel it this way, right? I mean, today I'm in good mood, so I'm gonna send million dollars to another account. No, no it's not. <laughs> it's a glitch, and to, to some extent, well, I mean creativity of the artificial intelligence is not a creativity it's just it's just the way how algorithmically it was built and how it produces the result which is basically a, to some extent a random outcome uh, based on some input parameters and basically i mean theoretically if the model is built properly it should generate every time it should generate something different because again it's a inherently random results it keeps it within narrow range. Obviously, it doesn't want to be wild. We don't want to see 100 legged elephants, right? But sometimes, like those glitches, like a five legged elephant or something like this, it's just a part of this random lens that just generates some deviation. And, and, and those deviations, um, name them creativity. I think it's a kind of overstretching and I mean, hallucination, hallucination is actually, I guess it's an over creativity, right? In, in, in this term. But yeah, I, I, I think, I think those words, they're misleading and provide. And there's, a, there's another word I want to throw in there because we are dealing with healthcare um, and, and life sciences and that, and that's the mental aspects, especially if you think about when, when there are drug trials, right? And, and tests, there's the placebo effect. I mean, you the reason why they've got a control group and a group they're actually testing on, they don't let either group know whether they're actually getting the medicine or getting the treatment or not because human, human beings can make up their own placebo effect uh, and make out as if they've actually been consuming that particular medicine or, or going through that treatment and they they show the same result <laughs> improvement in their health as if they if they didn't receive it as if they did so so is that hallucination is that <laughs> what is that creativity sure. is there a glitch in the brain for that i you know i suppose it's, it's these things become very very good questions because in that way we can start questioning human behavior as opposed to something that's maybe more predictable eventually and testing it against a more predictable output. 
Some people are saying that eventually all human output or thinking needs to be double checked by AI eventually. So to make sure that it's it's going to be at least realistic <laughs> at the output. <laughs> True, but uh, Dudley actually is an interesting fact I learned many, many years ago uh, when we didn't even, well, I mean, we didn't have such artificial intelligence as we have right now. Uh, mm -hmm. In our brain, there is a random generator piece. It literally just evolution made this piece for the cases when we have two similar outcomes we cannot objectively measure which outcome is preferable for us and just to avoid this like what i'm gonna do and just being stuck in the situation this random generator just pushes us in one way or another <laughs> so we are at some extent uh, hallucinating uh, creative <laughs> to some extent i mean obviously it's a different mechanism it doesn't have anything to do with our creativity but uh, we also to some extent machines and we have some mechanism and uh, to be frank the neural networks they are built they're overly simplified uh, how our brain behaves obviously we are not there from the uh from what machines that i mean some people are saying that we are close but no not, not yet i mean pretty far away we will need to build a pretty huge machine that would represent the brain of a single person uh, even so uh, uh, even chat gpt can generate much more creative and nicely written uh, text short ones not big ones but mm. I, I i guess my point here that uh we have a lot of stuff from the technology standpoint, from the artificial standpoint, uh, going to be developed over the years and years and years. Mm. And I mean, uh, well, just we just need to use in the positive way what we have right now. Don't be afraid of, of those achievements. Harness those technologies for human benefits in healthcare and specifically, and, and make sure that uh, um, our life is is better by using those technologies yeah i, to I totally agree and uh, i mean i i just think um we were talking about communication and translation um i don't know if you remember as a child if you ever played that game where you pe uh, the broke, broke I don't know, whoever where you were lined up and then you had to then you start with a sentence right and then you got to repeat the sentence to the next person in the, in the queue and then they then at the end, after 20 or 30 people have passed the message on, what does it sound like at the end, once it's gone through at least 20 or 30 humans, is almost never the, the same way it started. Because everybody adds on or takes or removes certain aspects or changes the meaning of certain things until the person at the end. So imagine, I mean, you've got now AI, which is catering for millions and millions of people at this stage already. I and mean, people have signed up to this building out models and testing and building out their own um, inputs and outputs and so on. Uh, but what's very interesting is that us humans are flawed as well. And I think it also is a, is a moment in time where we need to start understanding that potentially creating an AI system that is more predictable and potentially uh, a better way of measuring uh, consistency across answers and across communication in, in channels. So coming back to healthcare and life sciences, I think things like um, developing medicines and, and, and developing uh, the hardware and the imaging and other types of uh, you know, assessments and diagnostic tools and that, uh, you are leaving it less and less to, for human ability to go and get it completely wrong and more and more consistent in terms of results over time. I'm not saying right away, but over time, you should theoretically get more consistent, predictable results by having this as, an, as your assistant, if you like, as opposed to the human doing the only bit of thinking. <laughs> Just like with any other tool, I mean, I guess we kind of keep iterating I mean, over our uh, previous um, uh, meetings and recording. And mm. uh, right now it's, it's just a tool that uh, are given to us and we just need to learn to use it properly in the safe way, obviously, in the constructive way, in the proper way, in the good way, in, in human, 
way maybe to some extent uh, it's a it's a new tool uh, it's a lot of unknowns about this tool but we keep learning about it and keep uh, improving our life using this tool it's nothing more it's literally just a tool another tool and there will be more tools that we don't know about in the future so yeah what one of the one of the speakers this week at the panel that i, I was i was watching was um the guy said that AI right now is the worst it's ever going to be. Uh, right now is like in the early stages, but it, it will only just get better. So that was his statement was this, what you see now is the worst it's ever going to be. Right. Because the the improvements are going to be, uh, you know, the, the trajectory is, is very steep in terms of the improvements going from year on out. And we've already seen a lot of that. And a lot of noise right now. I mean, a lot of garbage coming from, from those resources, to be frank, a lot of stuff that will just die off because of um, it just doesn't bring any value to the businesses, to human, I mean, mm. entertainment, business, healthcare, uh, w w whatever it's going to be. Uh, and it's um, it just amount of information, amount of knowledge and amount of improvement, are, I, I guess, significantly bigger than anything we saw before and because mm -hmm. of this it looks a bit challenging a bit um, scary to some extent because we don't understand the entire system entire complexity of this and i mean if you don't if we don't understand then we start putting something from our brain our our issues reflecting our issues into into, <laughs> into those unknowns right adding something from our brain which doesn't have anything to do with reality <laughs> and and it's because of, of this uh, i guess huge amount of new stuff coming from artificial intelligence it just looks weird again scary uh, not understandable <laughs> but it uh, we, we will tackle it just just like with any other technology we did before right uh, so dimitri we, we've covered a lot of the, the the human and the behavioral psychology things we've, we've thought about things like bias and placebo and creativity and a lot of these studies that are busy happening and even translating between different audiences and right. we've spoken a lot about that so we've spoken about the human interaction with with ai but i think our next episode our next podcast and as we go deeper and deeper into really the world of healthcare and life sciences we we need to develop a, a more of a deeper and a richer understanding of of each one of the component parts of that sector that get that gets affected so as a cliffhanger and we let's leave the podcast right here and right now and, and we and we say to our audience guys join us next time because next next time we're going to touch on things like diagnostics imaging that's a very 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 big topic on its own drug discovery and development i mean that again is 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 uniquely different and it has a has a, a, a i would say a, a, a massive impact yeah. on on how much is going to be developed in improvements in terms of drugs and that looking at personalized medicine things like tailored medicines for specific things i remember getting a dna uh, test done some years ago and how massively that dna test has helped me in managing my own health because uh, i do long distance running i do uh, i do uh, sort of triathlons and i do that type of thing and the DNA test gave me really good markers in terms of how much time I need to give myself for recovery, diet, uh, rest, and et cetera, and, and also the patterns in which my training programs are to run. So that's personalized medicines, and that's on the, on, that's on the health, let's call it the, um, the sports side, but just more as uh, giving personalized medicine uh, feedback. Uh, is is another massive topic again if we look at like predictive analysis about taking data points and and and, and being able to predict things that might might happen in the future again it could help people that may be prone to getting diseases and things sometime in the future let's rather start treating it right now maybe even behavioral uh, like patterns in healthcare. And these other things, robotic surgery. I imagine going in for surgery and, and, and a robot is operating and there's no doctor in the room. I mean, that's, I, I, you know, at this stage, I don't even know how I'm going to feel about that if it ever has to happen to me. And then things like just normal administration for, for um, organizations in the healthcare and life sciences where they got to deal with a ton of paper and a ton of information and P 
people phoning and contacting them. So another big, big topic. So let's tackle those in the next few weeks as we go, because every week there's development even within each one of those different right. subcategories as well. So let's leave it there. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. It's been fascinating again having a conversation. You and I are incredibly busy understanding this world of AI, just like our audience is. And uh, we invite our audience to go on this journey with us as we discover more and better ways of how to use AI and how to make it make our lives better using this as a tool as opposed to being something to be scared of. Thanks so much, Dimitri. Thanks. Uh, appreciate Thank you your time. for conversation and see you guys next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.